Hey everybody, thanks for joining us. A brand spanking new series that we're gonna jump into right now. Have you ever heard people say, well, you just gotta rest on the promises of God. Well, you just need to hold on to the promises of God. And it sounds like a great spiritual thing to say and to encourage someone with. Maybe you've been encouraged by it before and then you gotta stop and go, yeah, that's good. What are the promises of God? Oh, what is it I need to hold on to? What is it I need to think about right now? Well, if you've ever been in that place of saying that and wondering what you're saying or having it said to you and going, what should I be thinking about? This series is for you. Um, and for the rest of you that go, I don't care about that. This series is still for you because you're gonna hear about the promises of God. Every day we're gonna break down here's a promise and what it means and why we hold on to it. And man, I hope every day it just gives you another piece of grace, hope, and strength, and man, do we need hope at this time. This may be the series you pass on to friends, family, loved ones, and go, hey, if you're searching for some hope at this time, tune in right now, be part of our Daily Dose. You're gonna get a hope promise every stinking day. I wanna start with one of my favorite ones. First John 1, 9 simply says this, if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Did you get that? I hope I didn't say that too loud at the microphone and you're driving, that kind of woke you up. But if you're driving, you need to be woken up. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and he's just and he will forgive us of our sins. And that's not a newsflash. Forgiveness, the promise of God, yeah, it's forgiveness. I heard about forgiveness growing up in church my entire life. No one ever told me about the and. And cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Here's what I love about this promise of God. It's twofold. With God's forgiveness, comes freedom. Again, the church does a great job talking about forgiveness. Sometimes we need to spend more time talking about freedom. I grew up in a church knowing that I was forgiven, but I still walked with guilt. I still walked with shame. I still walked with the pain of my past. Have you? Have you ever asked God to forgive you for something you've done? And, and, and days later, moments later, months, weeks, maybe years later, you still keep asking forgiveness for the same thing? Not because you've gone back and redone it, you still feel like you gotta ask forgiveness for it, why? If we believe God's promise that we're forgiven, it should be done. It's because we haven't walked in the and. God promises to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness, to take all that guilt and shame. This is what I love about the promise of God. He goes, Chris, you brought me your sin. That's great, I forgave you. You've gotta bring me your guilt and shame. What is it right now you still feel guilty about? What is it you still feel shameful about? What past event or action are you still afraid that people would find out about you? That, that you're afraid if people knew it about you, they'd think differently. If you have one of those, let, let me tell you, it still owns you, you don't own it. It has power over you. You are not empowered over it. Therefore, I would say you don't have freedom from it. Freedom is when someone can come up and go, hey, I heard you do this, and you go, yeah, man, I'm not proud of it at all, but I totally did that. Let me tell you about what I was doing at that time in my life. Let me tell you about what I was into and why. Oh, I'm not making excuses. I'm just telling you, it's not only been forgiven, I've been freed from that. That's who I used to be. That's not who I am today. That's what I once did. That's not a part of me today. Failure is a past. It's not a position that I stand with today. Failure in the Christian life is always an event. It is never a person. And not only did I find forgiveness from it, I have freedom. Hey, it's why you may hear me on the weekends. I'm the first to talk about my past, my sin and what I did. No shame, no guilt. Well, Chris, are you proud of it? Not at all. But the shame and the guilt's been dealt with. First John 1, 9. We talk a lot about forgiveness. Let me tell you about a promise of God I did not encounter until I was about 27 years old. When someone first said, look, you can have freedom too. It's all throughout the Bible. It's in so many stories. I don't have time to do it all in the daily dose. But for you today to stop asking for forgiveness and go, God, today I wanna walk in the freedom. You gotta come to God and bring it out and say, God, thank you. Not that it happened, not that I did it, or not that it was done to me, but thank you that in spite of this, I have forgiveness and grace and mercy today. May this never have in power over me again. You see, Satan would love to use your past against you, or it can be God's most powerful tool for you. It all depends if you have freedom over it, or does it still have freedom over you? Here's a promise. Bring God, if we confess our sins, if we bring it to him, he can give us forgiveness and freedom. God, thank you, not that it happened, not that it was done, but in spite of it, I am loved today. And from then on, I choose to walk in a higher truth. Yeah, that's true, I did it, but there's a higher truth. It's been forgiven, it's been dealt with, it doesn't have a hold on me. I am loved, I'm a child of God. 
I'm a prince or princess in the kingdom today. That is a higher truth than my past, and that is a promise I can walk in as long as I'm willing to let go of that. There's my favorite promise. Tune in tomorrow, because we're about to give you more.